Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here. Welcome to another video on the channel. Been out doing some shooting today, or as I like to call shopping. Hopefully uh, some wood pigeons, some grey squirrel, but I've got a course coming up in um, two weeks time in the Lake District. I've done a couple up there already and, and met quite a few people who've come on the course. So hello to everyone out there who came on the course. Hope you enjoyed it. On the course we do dressing of game. So what I get today and tomorrow, um, I will be freezing and then taking up to the Lake District for the game dressing part of the course where we'll all cook and eat it in the evening as well. So hopefully some wood pigeon, maybe some grey squirrel. Sadly, pheasant is out of season. But uh, as the weather gets worse and winter's coming in, uh, we're, we're certainly into autumn now. I thought I wanted to get a gun just that's a bit more rough and ready for the field. The Fausti is getting a bit of a beating, a lot of scratches, a lot of dings, and I've refinished the stock about a year ago and um, I just fancied giving it a little bit of service, re-blowing the barrels, getting it cleaned up. So I decided to uh, trade in my 410. I know it was a nice gun, but never used the thing and decided to get myself a bit more of a rough and ready 12 ball for the field. But this is the gun here. Um, I believe it's imported by Zabala Hermanos. So it's a Spanish gun and it's effectively a goose gun. It's got very long barrels, 32 inch barrels. Got a three quarter choke on the right and a full choke on the left. Double trigger, automatic safety, no ejectors. The barrel is proofed for quite a high pressure actually, given it can take three inch magnums. With long barrels and tight chokes and the markings that states it's proofed for steel shot. So it's ideal really by the coastline. And um, there is a lot of wildfowl down there and obviously within season you can take them, but you wanna be using steels really. Um, and my Fausti can't do that. There is a special kind of cartridge you can get, it stops the steel touching the edge of the barrel, but I've never been entirely comfortable with it. That's just probably ignorance, but uh, again, there were more reasons for buying this than just that. So quite happy with the gun, really looking forward to testing it out. Hopefully you'll join me in one of the outings tomorrow, where I'm gonna go out and gather some game for the course. But this video isn't gonna be about the gun, it's gonna be about the game bag I use when I go out hunting. Uh, I have a lot of questions about this game bag. Uh, rescued it and redesigned a little bit on it just to make it usable for hunting um, and for going out in the field a bit like a satchel. Stay tuned if you're interested. So I've got the game bag hung around my neck. It just means I can get into it a bit easier, show you what I'm carrying. Uh, obviously I'd wear it normally like a satchel, like you see me wearing it on all my other hunting videos when I'm out with the bag, but like this, obviously it's easy for me to show you guys. So. The origin of the bag, which is the main question I get, uh, what game bag do you use and where can I get it? And sadly, I don't have an answer for you. This bag was recovered from a skip. A friend of mine was clearing out his mother's house. He had a skip of things outside. He said, do you have any use for a bag like this? And I said, yeah, I reckon so. So I went home, I had some elasticated cartridge holders. You can buy these online. They're very, very inexpensive from somewhere like eBay. You can even make them. It's just elastic and they do them for rifle rounds, for shotgun rounds, for all sorts of different kinds of ammunition. And they come in a five. I stitch them onto the lip of the game bag like this. And it just means I have 10 shots hanging by my side that I can pop two fingers in like that, pull a couple of cartridges out, reload really fast and ditch the empties inside this outer pocket just here. And uh, it just makes for quite a a fluid setup when you're out and you want to reload because once you fire a shot with a shotgun um, things get a little bit disturbed obviously because they're pretty loud but a lot of the time the common misconception is that everything runs away from you most of the time pigeons and various other things don't really know what's going on and when you fire the shot they get startled and confused they fly around the general area sometimes re-landing back where you've shot and if you reload fast enough it just gives you the chance to wait for any strays that are coming in or have been stirred up by the shot. The bag, as far as I can tell, I did some research online, hours and hours of Googling, trying to find this bag, which is near enough impossible, but um, there is an RGW uh, sticker, or, or sorry, a label on the side there. So RGW is, is the brand of the bag. I mean, maybe if you type that in Google, you'll have more luck than I do. So uh, good luck to you. But your best bet is just getting something like a replica Maxpedition Versa Pack or Fat Boy, you know, the kind of bags they have. I used to have one myself, they're quite expensive, but there are lots of replicas out there. Maybe you could pick one up for 30 pounds or more 
and uh, get yourself something similar and just stitch some of these on if you want to customize it it's really simple to do I customize almost all my gear like the main pack I use you just make things more usable for yourself when you're out doing whatever you're doing so the knife I use when I bring this game bag out is this one here this is my neck knife from Lee from LB Customs covered it in the last video just the necker that I take out with me more of a companion knife to my main camp knife and uh, very useful for making a start on something before you use your hands if you're dressing game. Uh, the cartridges I use in these elasticated cartridge holders at the top, usually anything from 28 to 32 gram in five or six shot. Just really depends. I quite like 28 gram sixes at the Fausti. It's a bit of a lighter gun than the goose gun behind me there. Uh, but uh, obviously 30 gram six is what I'm using today. Perfect really, I really get on well with that kind of cartridge. Um, so I have 10 of those across the top. I actually do have an SG just there as well. Um, but inside these two pouches on the outside are normally just personal gear. In this mesh bit, I have a whistle and um, whistles are pretty useful. Sometimes I'm out with someone and the whistle just helps me find out where they are. If we're in the woods and we get kind of mixed up or they go one way and I go the other. Got some lip balm. Obviously when you spend a lot of time outside, like I do, I'm out almost every day most of the time, especially at this time of year, you get pretty chapped lips, really windy, so that is kind of useful. Inside this pouch here, um, I have a torch. Uh, this is my LD22 from my main pack. Just take it out of my pack before I go and I pop it in there. And um, it's quite a useful torch. Sometimes it's useful for a bit of lamping here and there, but I've had that torch for such a long time now and I do have a head strap for it to turn it into a head torch so I can be hands-free if I need to. I often have my car keys in here as well, which you can hear. In this pouch here, mobile phone and some bags. Sometimes I dress game in the field. Useful to have some bags like this just to put pigeon breasts in. That's normally what those little bags are for. Um, in the main compartment, I have, this is my where I ditch uh, spent casings, spent cartridges basically, so when I unload the gun I chuck the used cartridges in here, uh, but I have a sling for a side-by-side -side shotgun. This is a slip-on sling, so it goes over the barrels at one end and it goes over the stock, just like that at the other, and nooses around the actual gun. And it's pretty useful sometimes when you need a sling. I don't always like carrying the gun around all day. So a sling is pretty useful. Another piece of equipment I carry, just something I just made, is this leather cover to go on the actual buttstock. But I tell you, this is really not useful if you're doing clay pigeon shooting because the, and you have a bit of stubble on your, on your face. Because what will happen is it will rub against it and it gives you a bit of a rash and it isn't very nice at all. But when you're just firing a few shots when you're out hunting, um, it's quite useful for, for protecting a stock if you don't want to get your stock knocked about like I did when I refinished the Fausti on my other gun. You know, I was a bit precious of the stock because I'd just finished it. At the back we have one main compartment with a zip and that compartment has a flap in it dividing it into two. And uh, that helps if you want to separate a few things. You can see the flap just there. It just divides the big compartment into two, uh, meaning you know you can have wood pigeon one side, something the other, but it's it's just I've just left it there really because there's no need to get rid of it. Uh, but inside I have my ear defenders with a few pigeon feathers on. And uh, I've had tinnitus now in this ear here, probably going on about five or six years, just from using shotguns as a child and not putting my earplugs in properly uh, because I wanted to hear what was going on around me. And uh, that resulted in that ear getting pretty, pretty damaged. It's okay now and I don't even notice it. And uh, I had my hearing tested and I had perfect hearing despite having tinnitus and when they found that out they actually sent me in for an MRI scan because they thought well if you've got perfect hearing and you've got tinnitus which is connected to hearing loss then maybe something else is causing the problem like a lump or a brain tumour or something like that so uh, I got checked out everything was fine just really a result of using guns as a kid and being an idiot and not using ear protection so I get a lot of stick for wearing these in almost every video surprisingly looking after my health. I guess it's that whole masculinity thing that you shouldn't be wearing any kind of protection. But um, really it's quite the opposite. You know, having hearing problems can be 
um, really difficult for people, debilitating basically. And I had sleepless nights for a really long time when I had tinnitus. Now I'm used to it. The only time I heard it, um, again, very faintly, was funnily enough when I went to Sweden uh, because it's so quiet there, so quiet the time of year I went, um, you know, because all the birds had migrated and it's just vast wilderness and very few people living there in the north, that is. But these are a lifesaver. And uh, if we put them on, you push a button, and now I can hear perfectly. And it actually amplifies a lot of ambient sounds. Um, you can hear rustling. The only thing I would say they're, they're not very good on is um, direction. So we have two microphones here. They're waterproof. The whole thing can be rained on without a problem. So if you're by the coast, wild fowling or something, it's not a problem. But sometimes I hear a, a rustle might be there and I, and I sort of think it's there because of the microphone and I have to turn and adjust myself a bit. So it, they can be difficult, but they're not as bad as being deaf. And that's the main point really. And they take two triple A's and um, they're really comfortable. And what happens is, is if there's a bang that's over 80 decibels, um, they lower it to make it safe. So they don't cut it out altogether. It just brings the volume right down. So these normally hang around there whilst I'm walking about um, if I don't need them. And then I just put them on. Again, you've seen me use them in lots of videos. And um, that's really one of the downsides of using a gun like this. That's really loud. When I go away for solo bushcraft, um, like going out camping where I have to do some hunting as well, I don't really want to take these, but I kind of have to. Um, there's better technology around now, little things that go in your ears. I might look into that in the future, but these things cost money and we don't always have that kind of money to spend. If I had that kind of money to spend, I wouldn't have bought a 250 quid shotgun, but it does the job. Sometimes you just need a hammer to hammer a nail and that's what it is really. So that's kind of the game bag. I know it's a bit of an anti-climax. You're thinking it would be some amazing game bag, but I might actually contact someone and try and get something like this made. Um, quite inexpensively. That's about as complex as it gets. You could say I need a med kit and things like that. I don't really carry anything like that when I'm out hunting. Maybe just a few bits in my cargo pocket, but that's really it. But thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care guys.